Okay, tonight is the 28th of July. It's the 13th night. We are talking on the Diga Nikaya Suttas. We were doing uh, Sutta number 16 for two nights. Now this is the third night. We come to page 262. The Lord said, Ananda, let us cross the Hiranyavati River and go to the Mala Sal Grove in the vicinity of Kusinara. Very good, Lord, said Ananda. And the Lord, with a large company of monks, crossed the river and went to the Sal Grove. There the Lord said, Ananda, bear me a bed between these twin Sal trees with my head to the north. I am tired and want to lie down. Very good, Lord, said Ananda, and did so. Then the Lord lay down on his right side in the line posture, placing one foot on the other, mindful and clearly aware. And those twin sal trees burst forth into an abundance of untimely blossoms which fell upon the Tathagata's body, sprinkling it and covering it in homage. Divine coral tree flowers fell from the sky. Divine sandalwood powder fell from the sky, sprinkling and covering the Tathagata's body in homage. Divine music and song sounded from the sky in homage to the Tathagata. And the Lord said, Ananda, these sal trees have burst forth into an abundance of untimely blossoms. Divine or heavenly music and song sound from the sky in homage to the Tathagata. Never before has the the Tathagata been so honored, revered, esteemed, worshipped and adored. And yet, Ananda, whatever monk, nun, male or female lay follower, dwells practicing the Dhamma properly, and perfectly fulfills the Dhamma way. He or she honors the Tathagata, reveres and esteems him, and pays him the supreme homage. Therefore, Ananda, we will dwell dwell practicing the Dhamma properly, and perfectly fulfill the Dhamma way. This must be your watchword. I'll stop here for a moment. So here... Whatever homage we pay to the Buddha, the highest uh, is to practice his words uh, in the suttas uh, and uh, do as much as we can uh, to fulfill the the way of the Dhamma. Uh, then we really uh, have paid uh, homage to the Buddha. Uh. That's why when the Arahants attain liberation, uh, they say, that they have paid the highest homage to the Buddha because they have totally fulfilled the Buddha's instructions and attained liberation. Just then, the Venerable Upavana was standing in front of the Lord, fanning him, and the Lord told him to move. Move aside, monk. Do not stand in front of me. And the Venerable Ananda thought, this Venerable Upavana has long been the Lord's attendant, keeping close at hand, at his back and call. And now in his last hour, the Lord tells him to stand aside and not stand in front of him. Why ever does he do that? And he asked the Lord about this. And the Buddha said, Ananda, the devas from ten ten world spheres have gathered to see the Tathagata for a distance of twelve yojanas round around the Mala Sal Grove near Kusinara. There is not a space you could touch with the point of a hair that is not filled with mighty devas. And they are grumbling. We have come a long way to see the Tathagata. It is rare for a Tathagata, a Samasambuddha, to arise in the world. And tonight, in the last watch, the Tathagata will attain final Nibbana. And this mighty monk is standing in front of the Lord, preventing us from getting a glimpse of the Tathagata. And Ananda asks, But Lord, What kind of devas can the Lord perceive? And the Buddha said, Ananda, there are sky devas whose minds are earthbound. They are weeping and tearing their hair, raising their arms, throwing themselves down and twisting and turning, crying, All too soon the blessed Lord is passing away. All too soon the welfarer is passing away. All too soon the eye of the world is disappearing. And there are earth devas whose minds are earthbound who do likewise. But those devas who are free from craving endure patiently, saying, All compounded things are impermanent. What is the use of this? Lord, 
formerly monks who had spent the rains in various places, used to come to see the Tathagata, and we used to welcome them, them so that such well-trained monks might see you and pay their respects. But with the Lord's passing, we shall no longer have a chance to do this. And the Buddha said, Ananda, there are four places the sight of which should, ir- should arouse emotion in the faithful. Which are they? Here the Tathagata was born is the first. Here the Tathagata attained supreme enlightenment is the second. Here the Tathagata set in motion the wheel of Dhamma is the third. Here the Tathagata attained the Nibbana element without remainder is the fourth. And Ananda, the faithful monks and nuns, male and female lay followers, will visit those places, and any who die while making the pilgrimage to these shrines with a devout heart will, at the breaking up of the body after death, be reborn in a heavenly world. I'll stop here for a moment. So here, uh, the Buddha is saying uh, that these four places, uh, uh, many people will go, uh, even like nowadays. Uh, and if you go there with a very devout heart, uh, then if you happen to die there, uh, you will probably be reborn in heaven. Uh. But if you have a devout heart, uh, you die anywhere also, you'll be reborn in heaven, uh, not necessarily there. And Ananda asks, Lord, how should we act towards women? Do not see them, Ananda. But if we see them, how should we behave, Lord? Do not speak to them, Ananda. But if they speak to us, Lord, how should we behave? Practice mindfulness, Ananda. Stop here for a moment. Uh, this part also is very important. Uh, when someone practices a spiritual path, uh, he should keep a distance uh, from the opposite sex. Uh, uh, so that's why the Buddha says, uh, do not try not to see uh, women. And then if we have to see them, uh, try not to speak. Uh, and we have to speak, uh, practice mindfulness. Uh, so it's the same uh, uh, men towards women and women towards men. Uh, and Ananda asked again, Lord, what shall we do with the Tathagata's remains? And the Buddha said, Do not worry yourselves about the funeral arrangements, Ananda. You should strive for the highest goal. Devote yourselves to the highest goal and dwell with your minds tirelessly, zealously devoted to the highest goal. There are wise Katiyas, Brahmins and householders who are devoted to the Tathagata. They will take care of the funeral. But Lord, what are we to do with the Tathagata's remains? And the Buddha said, Ananda, they should be dealt with like the remains of a wheel-turning monarch. And how is that, Lord? And the Buddha said, Ananda, the remains of a wheel-turning monarch are wrapped in a new linen cloth. This they wrap in teased cotton wool, and this in a new cloth. Having done this five hundred times each, they enclose the king's body in an oil vat of iron, which is covered with another iron pot. Then having made a funeral pyre of all manner of perfumes, they cremate the king's body, and they raise a stupa at the crossroads. That, Ananda, is what they do with the remains of a wheel-turning monarch, and they should deal with the Tathagata's body in the same way. A stupa should be erected at the crossroads for the Tathagata, and and whoever lays reeds or puts sweet perfumes and colors there with a devout heart will reap benefit and happiness for a long time. Ananda, there are four persons worthy of a stupa. Who are they? A Tathagata, Arahan, Samasambuddha is one. A Pacheka Buddha is another. A disciple of a Tathagata is another, and a wheel-turning monarch is another. And why is each of these worthy of a stupa? Because, Ananda, at the thought, this is the stupa of a Tathagata, or of a Pacheka Buddha, or of a disciple of the Tathagata, or of a wheel-turning monarch, people's hearts are made peaceful, and then at the breaking up of the body after death, they go to a good destiny and re-arise in a heavenly world. That is the reason, and those are the four who are worthy of a stupa. Stop here for a moment. So here, 
uh, as far as the funeral arrangements, uh, the Buddha said uh, monks uh, should not worry about uh, how to arrange the funeral for the Buddha. Uh, he said, uh, leave it to the lay people. Uh, monks' duties is to practice uh, devoted to the highest goal. Uh, and then at the bottom of this section, uh, the Buddha talks about four persons worthy of a stupa. Uh, one is a uh, Samasam Buddha, second is uh, Pacheka Buddha, third, uh, here is his disciple, but uh, I think elsewhere they say uh, Aryan disciple of the Buddha, la. one who has attained Sotapanna, Sakadagamin, or Anagamin, or Arahan. And then the fourth is a wheel turning monarch, or universal monarch. Uh, you notice here uh, there's no mention of Bodhisattva or Bodhisattva hmm? in the Buddha's teachings. Uh, a bodhisattva is, uh, can be a uh, putujana or can be a uh, arya. Uh, so if it's an arya, it's already uh, under this, uh, the third category. Uh, so <clears throat> later books only, uh, they put the bodhisattva on such a high pedestal uh, and say uh, that there are 53 levels of bodhisattva and uh, arahan is only somewhere in the middle. Uh, Arahan is uh, even lower than the uh, Bodhisattva. But in fact, uh, uh, Arahan uh, is, uh, is, uh, is the highest uh, stage of uh, Aryahut. Uh, in fact, these three, uh, Samasam Buddha, Pacheka Buddha, and uh, Arahan, uh, all three are Arahans. Arahan, the word Arahan comes from the word Arahatta. And Arahatta consists of two words, Ara and Hatta. Ara is the spokes of the wheel, meaning here the wheel of Sangsara. And Hatta is broken. So one who has broken the wheel of uh, Sangsara is uh, liberated. Uh, so a liberated Arahana, there are three types. One is the Arahan disciple of the Buddha, and then the Pacheka Buddha. Pacheka Buddha, Buddha means a self-enlightened Arahana. One in his last life, uh, there's no Dhamma around and he strives very hard uh, by his own effort. Uh, uh, he attains enlightenment, that is a Buddha. La. So Buddhas, there are two types. One is Pacheka, who does not want to teach. which consists of 99.9% of the Buddhas. La. And Samasam Buddha, la, one who wants to teach the Dhamma to the whole world. La. And that is a very rare uh, thing to find. La. And the Venerable Ananda went into his lodging and stood lamenting, leaning on the doorpost. Alas, I am still a learner, a seka, with much to do, and the teacher is passing away who was so compassionate to me. Stop it for a moment. At that time, Venerable Ananda was supposed to be a sotapanna, first fruit, uh, Ariyala. Then the Lord inquired of the monks where Ananda was, and they told him. So he said to a certain monk, Go, monk, and say to Ananda for me, Friend Ananda, the teacher summons you. Very good, Lord, said the monk, and did so. Very good, friend, Ananda replied to that monk. And he went to the Lord, saluted him, and sat down to one side. And the Lord said, Enough, Ananda, do not weep and wail. Have I not already told you that all things that are pleasant and delightful are changeable, subject to separation and becoming other? So how could it be, Ananda, since whatever is born, become compounded, is subject to decay? How could it be that it should not pass away? For a long time, Ananda, you have been in the Tathagata's presence, showing loving kindness in acts of body, speech, and mind, beneficially, blessedly, wholeheartedly, and unstintingly. You have achieved much merit, Ananda. Make the effort, and in a short time, you will be free of the asavas. Then the Lord addressed the monks. Monks, all those who were arahans, samasam buddhas in the past, have had just such a chief attendant as Ananda, and so too will those blessed lords who come in the future. Monks, Ananda is wise. He knows when it is the right time for monks to come to see the Tathagata, when it is the right time for nuns, for male lay followers, for female lay followers, for kings, for royal ministers, for leaders of other schools, and for their pupils. Ananda has four remarkable and wonderful qualities. What are they? 
If a company of monks comes to see Ananda, they are pleased at the sight of him. And when Ananda talks Dhamma to them, they are pleased. And when he is silent, they are disappointed. So it is too with nuns, with male and female lay followers. And these four qualities apply to a wheel-turning monarch. If he is visited by a company of Katiyas, of Brahmins, of householders or of ascetics, they are pleased at the sight of him. And when he talks to them, and when he's, and when he's silent, they are disappointed. And so too it is with Ananda. Stop here for a moment. Uh. So you see the Buddha, uh, he prays Ananda to all the other monks, uh, because the Ananda, uh, remember Ananda has faithfully served the, the Buddha for 20 or 25 years. Uh. Uh, so, uh, that's why the Buddha was quite fond of him. Uh. After this, the Venerable Ananda said, Lord, may the Blessed Lord not pass away in this miserable little town of Wattle and Dob, right in the jungle, in the back of beyond. Lord, there are other great cities such as Champa, Rajagaha, Savati, Saketa, Kosambi or Varanasi. In those places, there are wealthy Katiyas, Brahmins and householders who are devoted to the Tathagata and they will provide for the Tathagata's funeral in proper style. And the Buddha said, Ananda, don't call it a miserable little town of wattle and dog, right in the jungle in the back of beyond. Once upon a time, Ananda, King Mahasudasana was a wheel-turning monarch, a rightful and righteous king who had conquered the land in four directions and ensured the security of his realm and who possessed the seven treasures. And Ananda this King Mahasudasana had this very Kusinara under the name of Kusavati for his capital. And it was 12 Yojanas or 120 kilometers huh, long from east to west and 7 Yojanas or 70 kilometers huh, wide from north to south. Kusavati was rich, prosperous and well populated, crowded with people and well stocked with food. Just as the Deva city of Alaka Manda is rich, <clears throat> prosperous and well populated, crowded with yakas and well stocked with food, so was the royal city of Kusavati. And the city of Kusavati was never free of ten sounds by day or night. The sound of elephants, horses, carriages, kettle drums, side drums, lutes, singing cymbals and gongs with cries of eat, drink and be merry as then. Uh, eat, drink and be merry nowadays will be yam sing. So this one, uh, you see, uh, the Buddha uh, chose to come to this place to pass away. Uh, and wherever Ananda said, this is such a, what we call a ulu place uh, in the back of beyond. Uh, why do you come here? Uh, you go to some rich city uh, and pass away there uh, and the rich uh, uh, lay people uh, will give you a proper funeral. Uh. The Buddha said, uh, don't look down on this place. Uh. This place used to be the capital of a wheel-turning king. Uh. And actually the Buddha was the, the wheel-turning king. Uh. So it looks like uh, uh, the memory uh, of the, the, such a beautiful life uh, when he was a wheel-turning monarch uh, brought him back to that place. Uh. That's why you see uh, a lot of people. If you you look like last night, yesterday, today, uh, you saw the VCD uh, on children who remember their past lives. Uh. Uh, these children, when they remember their past lives, uh, they want to go back to where they were before. Uh. And when they go back, uh, and the memory comes back to them, uh, sorrow wells up. Uh. They feel a lot of sorrow, uh, all the attachment uh, from the previous life. Uh, uh. So, in a way, uh, the Buddha, uh, still uh, all that memory of that beautiful life, uh, even though it's, you, 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 maybe you can't say it's attached to it, uh, but uh, the, the memory uh, of it uh, uh, brings him back to that place uh, uh, to pass away there. Uh. And now Ananda, go, go, go to Kusinara and announce to the Malas of Kusinara, tonight Vasetas, in the last watch, the Tathagata will attain final Nibbana. Approach him, Vasetas, approach him, lest later you should regret, saying, 
the Tathagata passed away in our parish and we did not take the opportunity to see him for the last time. Very good Lord, said Ananda. And taking robe and bowl, he went with a companion to Kusinara. Just then the malas of Kusinara were assembled in their meeting hall on some business. And Ananda came to them and delivered the Lord's words. And when they heard Ananda's words, the malas, with their sons, daughters-in-law and wives, were struck with anguish and sorrow. Their minds were overcome with grief, so that they were all weeping and tearing their hair. Then they all went to the Sal Grove where the Venerable Ananda was. And Ananda thought, If I allow the Malas of Kusinara to salute the Lord individually, the night will have passed before they have all paid homage. I had better let them pay homage family by family, saying, Lord, the Mala so and so with his children, his wife, his servants and his friends, pays homage at the Lord's feet. And so he presented them in that way, and thus allowed all the malas of Kusinara to pay homage to the Lord in the first watch. I'll stop here for a moment. So here you see Ananda is a very intelligent attendant of the Buddha. So he always finds the best thing to do. For this person, got to be intelligent and got to be mindful. Got to observe. How you see in Cantonese? Sang Seng. Sang Seng. Seng Mok. Seng Mok. Seng Mok. And at that time, a wanderer called Subhadda was in Kusinara, and he heard that the ascetic Gautama was to attain final Nibbana in the final watch of that night. And he thought, I've heard from venerable wanderers advanced in years, teachers of teachers, that a Tathagata, a Samasambuddha, only rarely arises in the world. And tonight in the last watch, the ascetic Gautama will attain final Nibbana. Now a doubt has risen in my mind, and I feel sure that the ascetic Gautama can teach me a, do- a doctrine to dispel that doubt. So Subhadda went to the Mala Sal Grove, to where the Venerable Ananda was, and told him what he had thought. Reverend Ananda, may I be permitted to see the ascetic Gautama? But Ananda replied, Enough, friend Subhadda, do not disturb the Tathagata. The Lord is weary. And Subhadda made his request a second and a third time, but still Ananda refused it. But the Lord overheard this conversation between Ananda and Subhadda, and he called to Ananda, Enough, Ananda, do not hinder Subhadda. Let him see the Tathagata, for whatever Subhadda asks, he will ask in quest of enlightenment, and not to annoy me. And what I say in reply to his questions, he will quickly understand. Then Ananda said, Go in friend, Subhadda, the Lord gives you leave. So you see here, I'll stop here for a moment. If somebody comes to discuss Dhamma with the Buddha, even on his deathbed, he is willing to discuss, even though he's tired and weary. That's how much people who understand the Dhamma, value the Dhamma. Then Subhadda approached the Lord, exchanged courtesies with him, and sat down to one side, saying, Venerable Gautama, all those ascetics and Brahmins who have orders and followings, who are teachers, well known and famous as founders of schools, and popularly regarded as saints like Purana Kasapa, Makali Gosala, Ajita Kesa Kambali, Pakuda Kachayana, Sanjaya Balata Putta, and the Niganta Nataputta. Have they all realized the truth as they all make out? Or have none of them realized it? Or have some realized it and some not? And the Buddha said, Enough, Subhadda. Never mind whether all or none or some of them have realized the truth. I will teach you Dhamma, Subhadda. Listen, pay close attention and I will speak. Yes, Lord, says Subhadda. And the Lord said, In whatever Dhamma Vinaya, the noble eightfold path is not found, No ascetic is found of the first, second, third, or fourth grade, meaning the uh, first fruit, second fruit, third fruit, and fourth fruit are real. But such ascetics can be found of the first, second, third, and fourth grade in the Dhamma Vinaya, where the noble eightfold path is found. Now, Subhadda, in this Dhamma Vinaya, or this uh, Buddhist uh, religion, uh, the noble eightfold path is found. And in it are to be found ascetics of the first, second, third, and fourth grade. 
Those other schools are devoid of true ascetics. But if in this one the monks were to live their life to perfection, the world would not lack for arahants. Twenty-nine years of age I was when I went forth to seek the good. Now over fifty years have passed since the day that I went forth to roam the realm of wisdom's law, outside of which no ascetic is. Other schools of such are bare, but if here monks live perfectly, the world won't lack for arahants. Stop here for a moment. So here the Buddha is saying, as long as people practice the Noble Eightfold Path fully, then arahants can still be found. So to practice the Noble Eightfold Path perfectly, we have to take the Buddha's words in the suttas as our best guide. At this, the wanderer Subhada said, Excellent Lord, excellent. It is as if someone were to set up what had been knocked down, or to point out the way to one who had got lost, or to bring an oil lamp into a dark place, so that those with eyes could see what was there. Just so the blessed Lord has expounded the Dhamma in various ways. And I, Lord, go for refuge to the blessed Lord, the Dhamma and the Sangha. May I receive the going forth in the Lord's presence. May I receive ordination. Uh, stop here for a moment. Uh. So here you see, uh, the Buddha is dying already. Uh, and this, this, this man is asking for ordination uh, at the last moment when the Buddha is dying. And the Buddha said, Subhadda, whoever coming from another school or sect uh, seeks the going forth and ordination in this Dhamma Vinaya must wait four months on probation. And at the end of four months, those monks who are established in mind may let him go forth and give him ordination to the status of a monk. However, there can be a distinction of persons. And he said, Lord, if those coming from other schools or sects must wait four months on probation, I will wait four years, and then let them give me the going forth and the ordination. But the Lord said to Ananda, Let Subhada go forth. Very good, Lord, said Ananda. And Subhada said to remember Ananda, Friend Ananda, it is a great gain for you all. It is very profitable for you that you have obtained the consecration of discipleship in the teacher's presence. Then Subhada received the going forth in the Lord's presence and the ordination. And from the moment of his ordination, the rebel Subhada, alone, secluded, unwearying, zealous and resolute, in a short time attained to that for which young men of good family go forth from the household life into homelessness, that unexcelled culmination of the holy life, having realized it here and now by his own insight and dwelt therein. Birth is destroyed, the holy life has been lived, what had to be done has been done, there is nothing further here. And the Venerable Subhada became another of the Arahants. He was the last personal disciple of the Buddha. Uh, so he was the very last person uh, to be ordained uh, in the presence of the Buddha. Uh. And the Lord said to Ananda, Ananda, it may be that you will think, the teacher's instruction has ceased. Now we have no teacher. It should not be seen like this. Ananda, for what I have taught and explained to you as Dhamma and Vinaya, will at my passing be your teacher. And whereas the monks are in the habit of addressing one another as avuso or friend, this custom is to be abrogated or cancelled after my passing. Senior monks shall address more junior monks by their name, their clan, or as avuso or friend. Whereas more junior monks are to address their seniors either as bante, or as Venerable Sir, let me see, what is 448 and 449? 448 is Bhante, uh, 449 is Ayasma. So these are the two terms uh, of respect. Uh. If they wish, the order may abolish the minor rules after my passing. After my passing, the monk Chana is to receive the Brahma Tanda, Brahma penalty. And remember Ananda asked, But Lord, what is the Brahma penalty? Whatever the monk Chana wants or says, he is not to be spoken to, admonished or instructed by the monks. Then the Lord addressed the monk, saying, It may be, monks, that some monk has doubt, doubts or uncertainty about the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha, or about the path or about the practice. Ask monks, 
do not afterwards feel remorse, thinking the teacher was there before us and we failed to ask the, the teacher, the Lord, face to face. At these words, the monks were silent. The Lord repeated his words a second and a third time, and still the monks were silent. Then the Lord said, Perhaps, monks, you do not ask out of respect for the teacher. Then, monks, let one friend tell it to another. But still they were silent. And the Venerable Ananda said, It is wonderful, Lord. It is marvelous. I clearly perceive that in this assembly there is not one monk who has doubts or uncertainty. And the Buddha said, You, Ananda, speak from faith. But the Tathagata knows that in this assembly there is not one monk who has doubts or uncertainty about the Buddha, Dhamma or Sangha or about the path or the practice. Ananda, at least one of these 500 monks, the least one of these 500 monks is a stream winner, incapable of falling into states of woe, certain of Nibbana. Uh, stop here for a moment. So here the Buddha is saying uh, that uh, all the 500 monks are Aryas. Uh, you see the Buddha left uh, four instructions uh, as he was about to pass away. Uh. The first one, the Buddha said, uh, What I have taught and explained to you as Dhamma and Vinaya, in other words, Suttas uh, and the Vinaya books, uh, will at my passing be your teacher. So now that the Buddha is not with us, uh, our real teacher uh, is the Suttas and the Vinaya. But the Vinaya is only for monks, uh, uh, since now we don't have nuns. Uh. So the uh, Suttas uh, will be the teacher uh, for everyone. Uh. So we have to remember this, uh, uh, instead of a lot of people uh, running around looking for teacher here and there. Uh. And the second one, uh, that uh, after the Buddha passed away, uh, um, a senior monk uh, can address a junior monk uh, by his name uh, uh, or avusola uh, or clan. Uh. But the junior monks must address the senior monks uh, as Bhante or Ayasmala. Uh. And thirdly, uh, the Sangha may abolish the minor rules. Uh. Minor rules uh, generally uh, uh, the uh, uh, how do you say the uh, the gross uh, gross uh, uh, the major rules uh, you can say the major rules are of two classes la. one is parajika one is sangha disesa la. parajika there are four precepts under parajika if a monk may, breaks any one of the four precepts, uh, he's automatically no more a monk, uh, even though he wears the robe. Uh. And uh, second class, uh, Sangha Disesa, uh, if a monk breaks uh, one of the precepts, uh, of the 13 precepts under Sangha Disesa, uh, then he's uh, half out of monkhood, uh, halfway out of monkhood. Uh, and he has to confess uh, and undergo the penance. Uh, and it takes 20 monks uh, to reinstate him. Uh. So these two are serious, uh, uh, serious uh, precepts la, or rules. La. Then the rest uh, are generally considered as minor. Uh, the rest are generally considered. Minor. But the the Buddha here uh, did not say uh, which minor rules can be abolished by the Sangha la, for a very good reason. Uh, the Buddha generally <clears throat> does not want the Sangha to abolish any minor rule uh, unless it is necessary, uh, unless the Sangha considers necessary. Uh, so uh, it is up to the Sangha to decide. Uh, so for example, in uh, Asian countries, uh, monks go on arms round uh, barefoot. Uh, that is a uh, general practice. Uh, but if in, in Germany or Switzerland or UK, uh, you go on arms round barefoot, uh, you, you won't be able to stand it. Uh. So the Sangha decides uh, uh, they can wear shoes uh, and go pin the butt. Or in Asia, uh, uh, it's, it's generally, generally enough uh, for a monk uh, to sleep uh, with the one set of robes uh, and if necessary, maybe a, a sleeping bag or a blanket. Uh. But in the uh, Europe, uh, where it's very cold uh, during the winter, uh, the monks uh, will have to wear long john and sweater and all this uh, when they sleep. Uh. 
uh, since it's necessary. Uh, so these are modified. Uh, these rules are modified uh, uh, where it's necessary. Uh. So uh, the Buddha purposely uh, did not say uh, so that they, it is up to the Sangha to decide. Uh, you know. Only when it's necessary. Uh. And then the fourth one, the Buddha said, uh, you have to uh, uh, this, uh, take action against this Chana. Chana is a monk uh, who has been very uh, stubborn. Uh, he has never listened to advice. Uh, uh, so the Buddha told the monks uh, not to speak to him. Uh, then later, uh, after the monks stopped speaking to him, uh, then he then he, he realized uh, then he changed his ways. Uh, so these are the four instructions uh, left by the Buddha. Uh. Then the Lord said to the monks, Now monks, I declare to you all conditioned things are of a nature to decay. Strive on untiringly. These were the Tathagata's last words. Then the Lord entered the first jhana. And leaving that, he entered the second, third and fourth jhana. Then leaving the fourth jhana, he entered the sphere of infinite space. Then the sphere of infinite consciousness. Then the sphere of nothingness. Then the sphere of neither perception nor non-perception. And leaving that, he attained the cessation of feeling and perception. Then the Venerable Ananda said to the Venerable Anuruddha, Venerable Anuruddha, the Lord has passed away. And Venerable Anuruddha said, No, friend Ananda, the Lord has not passed away. He has attained the cessation of feeling and perception. Then the Lord, leaving the attainment of the cessation of feeling and perception, entered the sphere of neither perception nor non-perception. And from that he entered the sphere of nothingness, the sphere of infinite consciousness, the sphere of infinite space. From the sphere of infinite space he entered the fourth jhana. From there the third, second and first jhana. Leaving the first jhana he entered the second, the third and the fourth jhana. After leaving the fourth jhana the Lord finally passed away. And at the Blessed Lord's final passing there was a great earthquake, terrible and hair raising, accompanied by thunder. And Brahma Sahampati uttered this verse, All beings in the world, all bodies must break up. Even the teacher, peerless in the human world, the mighty Lord and perfect Buddhas passed away. And Sakadevaraja uttered this verse, Impermanent are all compounded things, prone to rise and fall. Having risen, they are destroyed. They are passing through us bliss. This one we uh, just chanted, I think, today. Anicca vata sankara upada vaya damino upajitava nirujanti te sang upasamo sukho. And the Venerable Anuruddha uttered this verse, No breathing in and out, just with steadfast heart. The sage who is free from lust has passed away to peace. With mind unshaken, he endured all pains. By Nibbana, the illumined mind is freed. And the Venerable Ananda uttered this verse, Terrible was the quaking, men's hair stood on end, when the all-accomplished Buddha passed away. I'll stop here for a moment. So you hear, you see, the Buddha went through the various jhanas, and to attain the final Nibbana, he entered the Parinibbana, or final Nibbana, uh, from the fourth, uh, after leaving the fourth jhana. Uh, so this is, uh, you notice, uh, after leaving the fourth jhana. Why the fourth jhana? I think uh, because the fourth jhana is an extremely, the Buddha says, uh, imperturbable state, uh, a very uh, peaceful and unshakable state, uh, so that when the Buddha comes out of it, uh, he's still in that state. Uh, but he has to come out of it, come out of it nah, to enter Nibbana because he has to make that volition nah, to enter Nibbana. Uh, so, um, so if a person has not attained the fourth jhana, if you are not uh, uh, be able to enter the fourth jhana easily and at will, uh, I think it will be very difficult to enter, to pass away uh, into Nibbana like the Buddha. Uh, and those monks who had not yet overcome their passions wept and tore their hair, raising their arms, throwing themselves down and twisting and turning, crying. 
All too soon the blessed Lord has passed away. All too soon the well pharaoh has passed away. All too soon the eye of the world has disappeared. But those monks who were free from craving endured mindfully and clearly aware, saying, All compounded things are impermanent. What is the use of this? Then the Venerable Anuruddha said, Friends, enough of your weeping and wailing. Has not the Lord already told you that all things that are pleasant and delightful are changeable, subject to separation and to becoming other? So why all this, friends? Whatever is born become compounded, is subject to decay. It cannot be that it does not decay. The Deva's friends are grumbling. And they asked, Venerable Anuruddha, what kind of Devas are you aware of? And he said, Friend Ananda, there are sky Devas whose minds are earthbound. They are weeping and tearing their hair. And there are earth Devas whose minds are earthbound. They do, they do likewise. But those Devas who are free from craving endure patiently, saying, All compounded things are impermanent. What is the use of this? Then the Venerable Anuruddha and the Venerable Ananda spent the rest of the night in conversation on Dhamma. And the Venerable Anuruddha said, Now go, friend Ananda, to Kusinara and announce to the Malas, Vasetas, the Lord has passed away. Now is the time to do as you think fit. Yes, Bhante, said Ananda. And having dressed in the morning and taken, taken his robe and bowl, he went with a companion to Kusinara. At that time, the Malas of Kusinara were assembled in their meeting hall on some business, and the Venerable, Anand, Venerable Ananda came to them and delivered the Venerable Anuruddha's message. And when they heard the Venerable Ananda's words, the Malas were struck with anguish and sorrow. Their minds were overcome with grief, so that they were all tearing their hair, etc. Then the Malas ordered their men to bring perfume and reeds and gather all the musicians together. And with the perfumes and reeds and all the musicians, and with the hundred, the, and with the five hundred sets of garments, they went to the Sal Grove where the Lord's Buddha was lying. And there they honored, paid respects, worshipped and adored the Lord's body with dance and song and music, with garlands and scents, making awnings and circular tents in order to spend the day there. And they thought, it is too late to cremate the Lord's body today. We shall do so tomorrow. And so paying homage in the same way, they waited for a second, third, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth day. And on the seventh day, the Malas of Kusinara thought, We have paid sufficient honor with song and dance, etc., to the Lord's body. Now we shall burn his body after carrying him out by the south gate. Then eight Mala chiefs, having washed their heads and put on new clothes, declared, Now we will lift up the Lord's body but found they were unable to do so. So they went to the Venerable Anuruddha and told him what had happened. Why can't we lift up the Lord's body? And Venerable Anuruddha said, Vasetas, your intention is one thing, but the intention of the Devas is another. And they asked, Bhante, what is the intention of the Devas? And Venerable Anuruddha said, Vasetas, your intention is having paid homage to the Lord's body with dance and song, etc., to burn his body after carrying him out by the south gate. But the Deva's intention is, having paid homage to the Lord's body with heavenly dance, dance and song, etc., to carry him to the north of the city, bring him in through the north gate, and bear him through the middle of the city, and out through the eastern gate to the Mala shrine of Makuta Bandana, and there to burn the body. And they said, Bhante, if that is the Deva's intention, so be it. At that time, even the sewers and rubbish heaps of Kusinara were covered knee-high with coral tree flowers. And the Devas, as well as the Malas of Kusinara, honored the Lord's body with divine and human dancing, song, etc. And they carried the body to the north of the city, brought it in through the north gate, through the middle of the city and out through the eastern gate, gate to the Mala shrine of Makuta uh, here, and here they set the body down. Stop here for a moment. Uh. You notice here uh, in India uh, this is the tradition uh, when somebody dance, when somebody dies uh, they uh, show respect uh, by 
uh, singing and dancing and all that, lah. and uh, bringing uh, garlands and scents uh, uh, to to celebrate. Uh, uh. So uh, many years ago, when I went to India uh, to the holy places uh, for the uh, one and only time, uh, we passed a funeral procession on the road, lah. And we found that people were singing and dancing. So we inquired of the bus driver what is happening. And he said somebody passed away. And we found it a bit strange. In Malaysia, when somebody passes away, they'll be crying and weeping and all that. But there they are singing and dancing and so happy. So, totally different. Then they asked the Venerable Ananda, Lord, how should we deal with the body of the Tathagata? And he replied, Vasetas, you should deal with the Tathagata's body as you would that of a wheel-turning monarch. And they asked, And how do we deal with that, Vante? And he said, Vasetas, the remains are wrapped in a new linen cloth. This they wrap in teased cotton wool, etc., etc. And having made a funeral pyre of all manner of perfumes, they create the king's body and they raise a stupa at the crossroads. Then the malas ordered their men to bring the tea's cotton wool and they dealt with the katagata's body accordingly. Stop here for a moment. Uh, this tea's means are separated into separate fibers. Uh, so the cotton uh, separated into fibers. Uh. Now just then the venerable Kasapa the great, uh, Maha Kasapa, was travelling along the main road from Pava to Kusinara with a large company of about 500 monks. And leaving the road, the Venerable Mahakasapa sat down under a tree. And a certain Ajivaka chanced to be coming along the main road towards Pava, and he had picked a coral tree flower in Kusinara. The Venerable Kasapa saw him coming from afar and said to him, Friend, do you know our teacher? And he said, Yes, friend, I do. The Asati Gotama passed away a week ago. I picked this coral tree flower there. And those monks who had not yet overcome their passions wept and tore their hair, etc. But those monks who were free from craving endured mindfully and clearly aware, saying all compounded things are impermanent. What is the use of this? And sitting in the group was one Subhadda, who had gone forth late in life, and he said to those monks, Enough, friends, do not weep and wail. We are well rid of the great ascetic. We were always bothered by his saying, It is fitting for you to do this. It is not fitting for you to do that. Now we can do what we like and not do what we don't like. But the Venerable Mahakasapa said to the monks, Friends, enough of your weeping and wailing. Has not the Lord already told you that all things that are pleasant and delightful are changeable, subject to separation and becoming other or becoming otherwise? So why all these friends? Whatever is born, become, compounded, is subject to decay. It cannot be that it does not decay. Stop here for a moment. So you see, when the monks heard that the Buddha passed away, most of them were upset. But there was this Subhadda who had gone forth when he was old. And he was very happy. He said, now the great ascetic is gone, then we can do as we like. Uh, is uh, is something we notice uh, uh, people when they uh, renounce uh, uh, late in life uh, it's very hard to change their habits uh, uh, so um, um, like in Thailand uh, if the monastery they have a lot of people wanting to renounce uh, then uh, they, they prefer young people uh, they don't like old people to renounce uh, because it's harder to change their ways. Uh. Meanwhile, four Mala chiefs, having washed their heads and put on new clothes, said, We will light the Lord's funeral pyre. But they were unable to do so. They went to the Venerable Anuruddha and asked him why this was. And he said, Vasetas, your intention is one thing, but that of the Devas is another. And they said, Well, Lord, what is the intention of the Devas? And he said, Vasetas, the Deva's intention is this. The Venerable Kasapa or Maha Kasapa is coming along the main road from Pava to Kusinara with a large company of 500 monks. The Lord's funeral pyre will not be lit until the Venerable Maha Kasapa has paid homage with his head to the Lord's feet. 
And they said, Bhante, if that is the Deva's intention, so be it. Then the Venerable Mahakasapa went to the Mala shrine at Makuta Bandana to the Lord's funeral pyre and covering one shoulder with his robe, joined his hands in salutation, circumambulated the pyre three times and uncovering the Lord's feet, paid homage with his head to them. And the five hundred monks did likewise. And when this was done, the Lord's funeral pyre ignited of itself. Stop it for a moment. Uh. So you see here, uh, the devas, uh, even though they are unseen uh, by human beings, uh, they influence our life. Uh. Uh, so it is good uh, to be respectful of the devas around. The Buddha said, wherever we stay, uh, there are earth devas, there are tree devas and all that. Uh. So we have to... Uh, be uh, respectful to them uh, and if we come to a new place uh, it's good to burn incense and all that uh, to show our respect and appreciation of them uh, and then the, uh, then they will become our protectors uh, they will take care of us and when the Lord's body was burned what had been skin under skin, flesh, sinew or joint fluid, all that vanished and not even ashes or dust remains <clears throat> remain, only the bones remain. Just as when butter or oil is burnt, no ashes or dust remain. So it was with the Lord's body, only the bones were left. And all the 500 garments, even the innermost and the outermost cloth, were burnt up. And when the Lord's body was burnt up, a shower of water from the sky, and another with, which burst forth from the salt trees, extinguished the funeral pyre. And the malas of Kusinara poured, poured perfume water over it for the same purpose. Then the malas honored the relics for a week in the assembly hall, having made a lattice work of spears and an encircling wall of bows with dancing, singing, garlands and music. And King Ajatasattu, the Dehi Putta of Magadha, heard that the Lord had passed away at Kusinara, and he sent a message to the malas of Kusinara. The Lord was a Katya, and I am a Katya. I am worthy to receive a share of the Lord's remains. I will make a great stupa for them. The Lichavis of Vesali heard, and they sent a message. The Lord was a Katya, and we are Katyas. We are worthy to receive a share of the Lord's remains, and we will make a great stupa for them. The Sakyas of Kapilavatu heard, and they sent a message. The Lord was the chief of our clan. Here they must have uh, altered this a bit uh, because the Buddha was not the chief of their clan. We are worthy to receive a share of the Lord's remains and we will make a great stupa for them. The Bulayas, Bulayas of Alakappa and the Koliyas of Ramagama replied similarly. The Brahmin of Veta Deepa heard and he sent a message. The Lord was a Katya and I am a Brahmin. And he also requested a share. And the Malas of Pava sent a message. The Lord was a Katya. We are Katya. We are worthy to re receive a share of the Lord's remains. And we will make a great stupa for them. On hearing all this, the Malas of Kusinara addressed the crowd, saying, The Lord passed away in our parish. We will not give away any share of the Lord's remains. At this, the Brahmin Dona addressed the crowd in this verse. Listen, lords, to my proposal. Forbearance is the Buddha's teaching. It is not right that strife should come from sharing out the best of men's remains. Let's all be joined in harmony and peace, in friendship, sharing out portions eight. Let's two paths far and wide be put up, that all may see and gain in faith. Well then, Brahmin, you divide up the remains of the Lord in the best and fairest way. Very good friend, said Dona, and he made a good and fair division in to eight portions, and then said to the assembly, Gentlemen, please give me the urn, I will, and I will erect a great stupa for it. So they gave Dona the urn. Now the Mauryas of Pipalavana heard of the Lord's passing, and they sent a message. The Lord was a Katya, and we are Katyas. We are worthy to receive a portion of the Lord's remains, and we will make a great stupa for them. And they answered, There is not a portion of the Lord's remains left, they have all been divided up, so you must take the embers. And so they took the embers. 
Then King Ajata Satu of Magadha built a great stupa for the Lord's relics at Rajagaha. The Lichavis of Vesali built one at Vesali. The Sakyans of Kapilavatu built one at Kapilavatu. The Bulayas of Alakappa built one at Alakappa. The Koliyas of Ramagama built one at Ramagama. The Brahmin of Vetadipa built one of it at Vetadipa. The Malas of Pava built one at Pava. The Malas of Kusinara built a great stupa for the Lord's relics at Kusinara. The Brahmin Dona built a great stupa for the urn. And the Moriyas of Pipa Lavana built a great stupa for the embers at Pipa Lavana. Thus eight stupas were built for the relics, a ninth for the urn, and a tenth for the embers. That is how it was in the old days. Eight portions of relics there were of him, the all-seeing one. Of these, seven remained in Jambudipa with honor. The eighth in Ramagamas kept by Naga kings. One tooth the thirty gods have kept. Kalinga's kings have, wo- have won, the Nagas too. They shed their glory over the fruitful earth. Thus the seers honored by the honored. Gods and Nagas, kings, the noblest men, clasp their hands in homage. For hard it is to find another such for countless aeons. Uh, that's the end of the, uh, of the sutta. Uh, this, uh, when the uh, various uh, uh, kings uh, and the various uh, clans uh, ask for a share of the relics uh, and the malas at first refused, uh, then this Brahmin Dona, uh, he told them, uh, Forbearance is the Buddha's teaching. It is not right that strife should come from sharing out the best of men's remains. So he was afraid uh, because these powerful kings, uh, they demanded a share of the relics. uh, If they were not given a share of the relics, uh, probably they'll march with their army uh, into this uh, Kusinara and and get their share. uh, So they'll be fighting. uh. So this uh, Brahmin, uh, he foresaw all this. uh, So he said... uh, the Buddha said uh, to practice forbearance, uh, so give everyone a share, uh, and uh, so the Buddha's uh, remains uh, will uh, will uh, go to many places, uh, and people will erect uh, uh, stupas in many places for all to have more faith. Uh, so that's a good advice which they took. Uh, so that's the end of this sutta. This uh, the longest sutta. In the Nikayas, uh, we have managed to finish it uh, in how many nights? Three nights, huh? Mm, very good. Huh? Mm. Anything to discuss? Uh, okay. uh, nowadays, uh, there's a lot of claims uh, that uh, uh, a lot of people go around uh, exhibiting uh, what they call relics, la. and they claim Buddha's relics and the Arahant's relics and all that, la. but it's very hard to believe. Uh, the real relics, uh, I think uh, somebody has told me, has seen uh, in the museum at New Delhi, la. and uh, they were excavated by a geologist, uh, and uh, it's kept in the museum, la. and he has seen, uh, and those are bone relics, uh, really bones. Uh. But this Chinese has, has got this uh, funny concept uh, that relics means uh, something very beautiful uh, uh, and very small and colored and all this. Uh, that's not true. Uh. Relics actually, uh, in the Buddha's teachings, uh, uh, the Pali word is sarira. And sarira uh, means uh, the bone relics. Uh, after cremation, uh, what remains uh, are called the relics. Kwat uh, fui in Cantonese, kut hu in Hokkien. Uh, so, so uh, it's buried all over the place. So it's uh, after 2,500 years. Huh? Uh, you need a deva to find it. <laughs> but uh, many years ago, uh, they they did uh, dig and, and and found like uh, Sariputta and Mahamogalana's relics. Huh? India is one country. Huh? Because uh, Buddhism was uh, flourishing, uh, flourished one time in India. So there are many Buddhist temples uh, buried underground uh, over time. Uh, it's covered already because uh, uh, with the 
decay of Buddhism, uh, and Buddhism died out. Uh, so those uh, Buddhist temples were abandoned. Uh, some of them were taken over by Hindus, uh, uh, but many were abandoned. So over time, uh, being neglected, uh, they fell down, fell up, fell down, and broke up, and slowly covered over. Uh. So there are certain states, uh, like uh, for example, there's a state in India called Bihar. This word Bihar comes from the word Bihara. Bihara is the same as Vihara. Uh, so it's called Bihar because there are thousands and thousands of uh, Viharas la, in that state. Uh, but all of them are buried. And now uh, India is mostly a Hindu country. And uh, so they don't make the effort to dig up. No? And not only uh, Bihar, even uh, like Afghanistan, Pakistan, Bangladesh, uh, all these places, uh, uh, even uh, probably Iran, uh, you have uh, Buddha uh, statues and uh, temples uh, buried uh, underground. Uh, but no, uh, now many of them are Muslim, uh, Muslim countries, uh, so they don't want to dig up all this. Uh, Relics means uh, the remains after cremation. So everybody after cremation, uh, those are called relics. But as mentioned uh, in the this sutta, only four persons are worthy uh, of uh, the, the the relics are uh, worthy of veneration. Samasa Buddha, Pacheka Buddha, uh, Arya, and uh, uh, Universal Monarch. So like a lot of Buddhists uh, in Malaysia, uh, after the mother or father pass away, uh, and after cremation, uh, they keep the relics uh, in the temple uh, to pray. Uh. Actually, <laughs> not necessary. Uh, just dump it into the sea or into the river. Uh. After all, the the person has passed on. Uh, uh, he's not going to stay in the in the bones, uh, uh, in the relics. Mm. In in Buddhist countries like Thailand, uh, after somebody has passed away and they cremate, uh, out of attachment, uh, they still keep the relics. Uh, and they put, uh, for example, a farmer uh, in his land, uh, there'll be small uh, small stupas uh, where their family remains uh, are kept. Uh, uh, so each person has passed away, they, they have one stupa. Uh, I'm not sure the stupa might be uh, two feet two feet high like that, uh, two or three feet high. Some some monks, uh, they give some relics and they claim that it's the Buddha's relics. How can there, there be so many of the Buddha's relics around? See if the light is on. You wait a while. After switching on, you have to wait a while. Uh, what to do with them? Uh? You can give to some temple which wants. Uh. Mm. There'll be there. Otherwise, give to some some devotees who want. There'll be some devotees who want. Okay, shall we end here?